So guys, it's time to start with the ideal gas law. I know you've seen it before. And it's the simplest form to relate all these parameters. Small, pressure, volume, and temperature. You may know it as this one here, or you may know it as this expression right here. Where does the N go? It goes here. So volume divided by moles, that's actually a specific molar volume. So just be sure that in this case, you will be still using the ideal gas uh, constant here. So P stands for pressure, normally measure either in pascals, kilopascals, absolute uh, pressure, of course. Now volume, typical measurements, cubic meter, then moles, it's actually N. R is the ideal gas constant, which is cubic meters, pascal, per gramol Kelvin. And this value will change, of course, depending on the units you want to use. And finally, but not least, because this is very important, guys, you will be using absolute temperatures. The good thing on um, ideal gas is that you may apply it in cases in which pressures are relatively low and temperatures are relatively high. So essentially, you want to make all the substances or particles apart as possible. So how do you do that? Decrease the pressure and you will, uh, let's say, make these molecules far. And if you increase te uh, temperature, they will go, of course, faster and so on. Now about the R is essentially the gas constant. How do they check it out? Well, of course, this is typical example. They see that if they increase the pressure, the volume decreased. If they increase the pressure, the temperature increase. If they decrease the volume, the temperature increase. If the amount of substance increase, then the volume increase. And a lot of set of experiments, uh, actually there are Avogadro's experiment and oh, Avogadro's law, then is the Boyle's law, and there's uh, many other two, I think two other laws, which relate pressure and volume pressure and temperature, substance and volume. Actually, this is Apograto, which is, uh, I think, Boyle and Lavoisier, I think. I don't remember well. But anyways, then suddenly they always saw that they got this ratio. You know that to take away that ratio, you need to add a constant. So they added this constant. Let's call it R. And they made a lot of uh, experiments, actually a set of experiments, until the, they actually got the value as a constant. And they got this right here. <clears throat> Whatever value you want to choose, uh, I think the, this one is the international unit one, SI, or the international system. You may use whatever you think it's best for you. I prefer to memorize one and then I will probably change, probably if I'm using liters, I know 1000 liter is one cubic meter, or if I'm using megapascals, I know that 10 to the sixth power is essentially one megapascal. And Kelvin, well, Celsius to Kelvin is one. A mole, kilomole, well, you can use that as well. Limitations, guys, are essentially high pressures, our model will start failing, or low pressures, why? because they are achieving zero absolutes in which the molecules stop moving. High pressures because they start getting all together and technically speaking they are reaching liquid zone or supercritical zone which we don't want to. We want the ideal gas as gas as possible. I know it sounds crazy but we want it to be a gas or free gas. And probably you are wondering or asking yourself what is high pressure and what is low pressure well that depends actually on the gas but as a thumb roll you may use this one for diatomic gases always calculate the specific volume and if you have 5 liters per mole you will have a small range of error if you have let's say a little bit less well then you will uh, a little bit more then you will be risking a little bit on error and for other gases, which are probably most gases, the specific volume should lie, uh, let's say, 
near or at least at the least the minimum should be 20 liters per month so if you have uh, a specific volume of 200 you are perfectly set to suppose that your error will be around 1% uh, and that's I think everything I wanted to show you guys one last thing pressure temperature may be given calculated or estimated so once you get this you may relate these two guys because once you get pressure and temperature you may relate moles or volume if you relate volume you know that if you have the total amount of volume you can calculate the total amount of moles which means that not only you have the amount of moles but you could do a mass balance and why do we want the mass balance because eventually we're going to need how much mass is there in the system how much energy is required to get to that system how much is the total entropy, the total volume, entropy needed, etc. So probably you want to read this, uh, pause the video, read it. These are some examples of why are we going to need that, but I think that's uh, enough for the video. In the next video we're going to check out one exercise. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.